I want to turn all of you from being gazelles to lion today. Would you allow me to do that? Would you allow me to do that? I want to tell you things that my father never said to me. And probably your father has not said. But I'm going to tell you now because I want to take over as your father. I will start with a very interesting story. Put your hands down. Next slide. Now, there is a story about two twin boys that were raised by an alcoholic father. What happened was that every time the father comes home, he was always drunk. He will beat his wife, he will insult everybody, and he'll go into sleep. So every day, next slide, he would always carry out that issue. The family had been threatened a lot of times that they're going to break up, they're going to go out of the, out of the family. So over the years, when the boys grew up, next slide, we found out that one of the boys became a drunkard and alcoholic. And then they asked, what happened? He said, because I saw my father. The one that was a drunkard saw his father as an alcoholic and became an alcoholic. Then the second one, they asked him, how come you have became a doctor? The man said, because I saw my father. He saw his father was, a, was an alcoholic and refused to be an alcoholic. The same father, the same situation, but two different perspectives. It is very, very important to note that there are common traits that happen to children who have been abused by the actions of our fathers. And these children, a lot of them come out in isolation. They don't talk to people. And at a point in time, it affects the kind of decisions they make. But next slide. But if you look at that situation where those two twin boys were, they came to a point that they had to make a choice. The first thing that will happen to you as a young man or as a young woman here, is that the decision for your life is not in the hands of God. It's in your own hands. The decision to become a success or a failure is in your own hands, not in your father's hands. It is important you know this now, because I'm going to be shaking some tables today. I will break some, I will burn some, I will throw some away. Because we must... Leave this poverty, minchomic, mundane, moribund, microscopic mentality. We can't continue like this. I heard an intelligent girl ask a question, how do, be, how do I become a millionaire? And I bet you, if she ever talks like that in her house, they'll beat her up. Because if your father has never thought of being a millionaire, you dare not say you want to be a millionaire. If that girl was the answer to the problem in their family, they would shut her up that day. The fact that your father was not a millionaire does not mean that you cannot be a millionaire. I came here as an example of something that will happen to you. Whenever you see the glory on anybody, ask for the story. I was born in Obanikoro. I grew up in Mende Maryland. I actually lived in Alagbado. I paid for a house on this street. The person that I paid for, the agent disappeared with the money. Whenever you see the glory on anybody, always ask the person for the story because there is no glory, there is no person that has glory that does not have a story. If you see anybody that has glory, no story, know that that story is fake. But whenever you see that glory, be very careful. I was born in a polygamous family. I did not know. My father, at the age of 39, died. When he died, he had two wives. We found out about the second wife when we wanted to bury my father, that he had a second wife with four children. We now had to stay in a three-bedroom flat in Mende, Maryland. Every morning, every night, when we come back home, our mothers will indoctrinate you. Say, don't talk to them. They want to come and take your father's thing. They want to take your mother's thing. Because of that, we, don't, we, we, we hated our own brothers and our own sisters. I know that there are some of you that are seated here. You also have that situation as you speak. Your mothers have told you, don't talk to those people. They want to take your father's thing. Listen to me, they're not taking anybody's thing. Everything that God gave you is inside you, not outside you. It's inside you. David said, you can take my car, take my Bentley, take my... But one thing you dare not touch, don't touch what is inside me. I pushed everything. I did not talk to my brothers. So every time that we're entering the house, there was always a stone or a pot or a bottle flying in that house because that house was Game of Thrones. <laughs> it was war in that house. Till today now, some of my brothers, I don't talk to them. Not because I don't want to, but how do I start a communication with somebody that is carrying a dagger at his back? 
My father was everything I wanted to be in life. God help me. My father told me nothing about life, nothing about business, nothing about family. He told me nothing. My father never said anything to me. When fathers and mothers keep quiet, next slide, their children become irresponsible tomorrow. There are some of you here who are raised by other people that are not your biological parents, but yet they spend their time raising you or that person is also a father to you. There are people here that say, how will I become rich? So a girl asks that question. Something in my inside moved. I felt like taking her to space immediately and tell her, honey, you will make it in this life. I was there. I, I, I failed in my life. I failed, I failed, I failed. When I was coming down this road, I didn't need a Google map. I knew the place because I've been here before. I've been here before. Some of us, I don't feel about neighborhood, feel about religion. Next slide. But let me tell you one thing. Every single one of us that came to this world, we came here naked. Nobody came with a shoe. Nobody came with an iPad. We all came here naked. We all have the same fear, the fear of falling down and the fear of a loud noise. Every other fear you have, you lent it yourself. And I dare say the environment you live in affects you. How do you wake up in the morning, every day in the morning, the first thing you see is your neighbor fighting your neighbor. Because you see that every single day, you yourself, you believe that that is how survival is supposed to be. You wake up in the morning, you are carrying a matchet, you are carrying a bottle to break somebody's head in school because you think that is how life is supposed supposed to be no 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 what they are doing is that they are directing your life in a way that you are not supposed to be you look at a girl who is in jss3 you are in ss3 you wake up and said to get to that girl you are going to dominate that girl by raping her no 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 because people have fed your mind people have said things into your mind you are failure personified i came here to say no you are the best thing that god created and you are going to make it this year Now let's start shaking the house. Between the ages of zero to six, they are called the years of innocence. You don't even know what is happening to you at that time. But between the ages of six to 12, they are foundation years. This is when you begin to learn things, learn your language, learn to speak your about Igbo. Every single thing that you speak, you learn to speak at that point in time. I don't know the school you go to, but you have learned songs there. Maybe uh, Monini, Monini, Monini. You know the song. Some of you even know my name, my name, my name. You know the song. You know Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. You learned it in school. Did they teach you how to speak your language at home? Did they teach you how to speak it anywhere? Which school did they teach you to speak your language? You learned everything good. You begin to soak in between the ages of 6 to 12. When you get to 13, if you're a young man, your voice begins to break. You begin to be, get, enter puberty. As a lady, you begin to have menstrual issues starting to come out. You have turned from a girl to a woman at that age. But you need to mature quickly. Between the ages of 13 to 19, that is vision definition, yes. 80% of all of you here, you are in that state of your life. That is when you say, no, I want to be an engineer. I want to be an architect. I want to be a pastor. I want to be an imam. I want to be a doctor. I want to do something. That year is critical because at that point in time, that is when everything in your life begins to shape or die at that point in time. If you go and tell your mom, mom, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an artist. I want to be something. And they tell you to keep quiet. What they don't know they're doing is they're killing something in the inside of you. When you tell your daddy, daddy, I like to sing, and your father says, keep quiet. They're killing something in the inside of you. Every time they kill something inside of you, it takes a part of your life away. Now, a lot of people that have graduated now, have started even doing working in bank, but when they work in bank, at night, they go into a small place and begin to practice how to sing because their passion has always been singing. Their passion has always been singing. That passion has always been singing. I came to stir that gift in the inside of you. Anything that God has put inside of you, it must come out because you are a gift to this world. God knew that we needed you. He sent you down. You were packaged by God. You were designed to come and solve a problem in Nigeria. He did not make a mistake putting you in Agege. Agege needed reformation. He put you here so you can see and you are here to solve a problem. Say, I hear you. 
because there are certain young people that are past the age of 20, 25 years old. They are still waiting for their father to give them breakfast. They wait for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. They line up in the morning with this entitlement mentality that my father must give me breakfast, give me pounded yam, give me chips, give me tea, give me a wagon with bread in the morning. They eat, they swallow at 11 o'clock. They wake up and they listen to tell the what Telemundo, Z World, watch all these uh, films. Then by 1 o'clock, they are eating pounded yam with, um, with um, a foriro. Chop that one, they're pushing the meat to look for the soup. By four o'clock, they're watching us now. Going to female to watch Chelsea, um, La Liga, Bot Liga, whatever Liga they want to Liga. They know you when, when um, Xavier Henry was born. They know every single thing about complete football, but know nothing about their life. Uh, by 6 p.m. Because their sister is doing keto, she doesn't eat carbohydrate, so she puts fish and puts a lot of vegetable. What happens after that? The boy looks at it and tells his sister, Ele ikole wek. You know, he leaves that place. He goes to Agege, goes to Oju Elegba, I mean, um, Abu Legba, or goes down to Meron, or crosses the road to Alagba, no Colintin, enter there, where they are selling bush meat, and they are taking or they could step down with two bottles of stout, and then come back, one, two, three, three, four, five months, six months, one year, two years, three years, four years, and then you come to church and say, Pastor, pray for me. There's a witch in my family that does not want me to go. I came to expose that witch today. Your father and your mother that gave you free food. When your father and mother gives you free food, they stop you from thinking. 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 And when they stop you from thinking, they stop you from productivity. Hear me now. You are between the ages of 13 to 19. You had better find your passion. Passion is anything you can do without praying. When that girl was saying that she doesn't need money to do this thing, I looked at her and said, you're a lucky man. Come and try somebody else. And I said, come and cover this. You'll pay one million naira today. Because she doesn't understand value, teach her to sharpen and teach her how to sell. Free things kill people. Yes, Stop doing free. Hey. You are an agege because you don't understand to sell. Once you are putting value on yourself, you will leave that position. I got tired of living in Alagbado. I got tired of entering Kekena Pep. I got tired of sitting on Akoda. I got tired of begging people for help. I got tired of telling Aliu, please give me beans, give me this. I'll pay one more. When I understood the power of money, I said enough is enough. I changed my medulla oblongata. I changed the way I think. When money enters, options are there. Hey. Next slide, next slide. Next slide. When you don't understand this, you wait in your house and sleep and you'll be discussing APC and PDP. At the age of 17, you can join the military, you can join the police, but you need a letter from your father or your mother telling you approval. But once you are 18 years old, is there any 18-year-old person in this house? Once you are 18 years old, you don't need a letter from your father or your mother to join the military. All you need to do is go to Maryland Barrack, fill the form there. When they get you, they take you to that barrack, beat the nonsense out of you, take you to Abuja, flog the nonsense out of you, send you to Sambisa forest, carry a gun and show you, teach you to shoot, and at the end they deploy you with Nigerian uniform and send you to Sambisa, and they tell you anything that is coming against the country, anything coming against the state, anything coming against you, you have the right of the president, commander in chief, to shoot that bagger down. If Nigerian government can trust you at the age of 18 to shoot a gun, I beg you by the age of 18, you are authorized to make one million. If anybody looks at you, tell him you are warming up, you are warming up because at 18 you must make one million. You are making one million by 18. Stop all these relationships with poor people, it's a waste of executive time. 
Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You have been playing too much with poor thinking. You have been playing too much with the man that is selling and going beans and, and, and bread. Yeah, stop talking to those people. How do you wake up? Your best friend is an Okada driver. How do you wake up and your best friend is a Kekena pep? How do you wake up? Look for people that are going somewhere and say, Today you are my father. I adopt you to be my father. Stop that rubbish. Next slide. That confidence guarantees you belief system that is strong. Your strength is hidden in your confidence. If you build your confidence strong enough, you can do anything. Why you are afraid is because you have not built your, your, your belief system. Once you say to yourself, I can do it. Once you say to yourself, I will make it. Once you say to yourself, I can win in this matter. Trust me, nobody can put you down. Next slide. I love the lion. The lion is called the Pantera Leo. Show me the next slide. The lion is the biggest, is the strongest, is the, is the most interesting animal in the jungle for me. Next slide. One of the things I know about the lion is that if you are to do a competition in the, in the bush, you, the lion will not be the tallest animal because the giraffe is taller than the lion. The lion is not the biggest animal. The lion is not the fattest animal. The lion is not the fastest animal. And the lion, by God, is not the most intelligent animal. But trust me, there is only one thing. That lion is called the king of the jungle just because of one thing. It has an attitude to win. When a lion wakes up in his house uh, and looks outside, he sees an elephant. He says, that elephant, I am going to eat it. Because a lion, as the way he thinks, he will go for it. But the elephant, bigger than the lion, looks at the lion. He says, this one will eat me. He knows that if he steps on the lion, he can kill the lion. But trust me, but because of the way he thinks, your problem is not a jegule. Your problem is not a gege. Your problem is inside your head. If you can change the way you think, you will change your address. I speak to young lions that are here. Every single teenager that is here, you're a long, long, young lion. Trust me, you're endangered. That is why life is attacking you like this. Because they know that if they give you space, you will take over the world. But you need to fight. for this. Somebody say fight. fight. Next slide for me. Let me teach you some battle strategies. I used to live in Alagbado. Alagbado. I used to work in Victoria Island. I would leave my house by 4.30 in the morning. Otherwise, I would not get to work by 7.30. All the people that were inside the car were people that I did not want to associate with. How will you enter a car with white shirts, red tie, black suits? But when you enter the car, you need to wear it inside out because the woman that is sitting beside you is a meat seller going to Oshodi. And that woman has not taken her bath yet. She needs to finish the day's work before she takes her bath. How do you wake up and the first person you have to talk to in the day is an Okada man? I woke up one morning and I said, no, 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 I cannot continue like this. Two things changed my life, passion and profit. Next slide. Passion is anything you can do, even for free. When I heard your daughter speak, I had passion. But trust me, passion is what you can do without paying any money. Passion is what you can do for free. Passion is what you can wake you up at night and you can do next life. But you need to feed that passion. And you need to teach this girl something. I used to go to Ojo Elegba, go to CMS and buy magazines there about security. I read security magazine. I need to read security magazine. Whatever your passion is, any single one of you, go and read about it. Go and read. Get the magazine for my gege for me catch a roundabout under the bridge whichever place they sell magazine instead of buying lollipop go and spend money on buying material eat that material in the morning eat it in the afternoon eat it at night whatever you eat and continually eat will eventually eat you up yes. will eat you up will eat you up will eat you up it ate me up this one is for you girl passion cannot do it alone listen to me Arella passion Without motivation, it's frustration. Come here, girl. Come here. I see the way you bend down with passion here. One day she was taking a picture. This girl was actually on the floor. She doesn't know what money is. Ah! I looked at myself. I said, God, help me. Help 
her to understand money. Help her. Because when she understands money, there will be a lot of opportunity. Look at her junior sister has taken position there at the age of six. What do you do now? At eight years old, that one knows how to operate a, a Nikon camera. What do you do now? If you call anybody to take a picture of your wedding, you pay 350000 So this girl is already 350000 naira per day worth. Multiply that by 30 days because if you cannot count, you cannot be rich. That means as you are seen here, this girl is valued at 9 million naira a month, 82 million a year. That is her net worth. She is not your mate. Please go there. Money does not respect age. The fact that you are taller than her, bigger than her, does not matter at all. Yes, the Bible says money is a defense. Yes. Money gives her options. Money gives her a voice. He that has the money dictates what happens. No matter how bad the recession is in the forest, a lion will never eat grass. I woke up one morning and I said enough is enough. Until you get angry with where you are, poverty will take you. When you wake up, do you wake up as a gazelle or do you wake up as a lion? Next slide. Number one, the rich man tells his children the importance of money. We discuss money with our children they must understand that that trouser you wear cost money they must understand we don't exonerate them from the discussion of money teach your brothers your juniors about money let them hold the money in their hand let them feel it if your father is not talking to you about money you have a phone or an ability to go online go and write what is money Read it, study it, eat it, you become it. A poor man will never talk to his child about money. When the child is asking me, Daddy, how much did you pay for the house? Let me tell you the difference between a poor man and a rich man. Ask your father, how much do you pay for the house? He will ask you, are you going to pay it? That's a poor man. A rich man will tell you, bro, it cost me 4.5 million. He wants to dream it into your head that there's a cost for you sleeping in this house. Whenever I travel anywhere, my son holds the money. He's the one that accounts for it. Because tomorrow, if I'm not there, how will he survive with the money? My daughter is there. Same thing. I trust them with my life. Next slide. Number two. I tell them the difference between an asset and a liability. Asset, liability. What is an asset? An asset is anything that brings money to you. Liability is anything that takes money from you. I expect that today, somebody will go to MTN and tell them, MTN, how can I make money helping you in MTN? MTN will tell you, upgrade somebody to 4G network. They'll give you 100 naira. By the time you do 10 people in a day, you have 30,000 naira in a month. It's not your money, it's just helping them. They'll give you a short code and you do it. Somebody should walk to farm milk. Farm milk, what can I do? Is it okay? Show people how to buy farm milk or something. Find out, follow the money. Don't let an opportunity to ask about money pass you by. You need to be able to talk to them about how money is made. You need to give them insight into how much their school fees is. Help them to understand how much you spend on them so that they too can appreciate it and know what budgeting is all about. How much do you spend to put food in their house? Let them know. They have an idea. They know. Because tomorrow when their life starts or when they go alone, they should be able to budget for themselves. I can't throw my children into the place without teaching them about money. I can't. 
I sent my daughter to Dubai. That trip, she went to Dubai. I gave her $200. 200. That is 60,000 naira to go to Dubai because I knew that it would have to spend money. Unknown to me, she came back, she bought gifts for everybody in the house. Everybody. She was able to calculate how much should I spend for daddy? How much should I spend for mommy? And she looked at me and said, Daddy, only 500 naira is enough for daddy. Only 500 naira. Mommy, maybe 2,000 naira, but daddy, 500 naira. Daddy has money, but mommy doesn't have money. Imagine that kind of thing. Now, she went and bought for everybody in the house. I was so excited that she was able to manage that money. She came back and told me that a father gave his son $6,000. $6,000, 3 million naira for 10 days. I fear for rich people because if a rich man doesn't train his child about money, when he dies, the children will waste that money. Next slide. You need to show yourself the different ways of making money. There are four ways of making money. One, as an employee, whereby you work for money. Number two, as a self-employed, yes, you can do the business. Some of you can do hair. Tell your auntie, if you are doing your hair, auntie, you pay me 1,000 naira. Charge them. God gave you the gift. Don't do it for free. Self-employed. The third one is owning a business, owning a system. And then the fourth one is an investor. Investor. The picture you see there is Obama's daughter. When Obama was president, he sent his daughter to go and work in a fast food restaurant selling buns and sugar. They didn't tell her to go and live in Dubai. She had to go and learn to work. My children go to learn to work because you must learn how you make money working. But I also teach them how to do business. A poor man will only teach his child how to go and get a job. There are other ways of making money. In the Garden of Eden, there were four rivers entering the garden. Four. If it took God, four rivers to water the garden, you cannot be alive and tell me you only need one source of income. If you have only one source of income, you're a poor man. Change your habits. Develop habits that will make you well. Show your children the price they need to pay. In the morning, I spend an hour listening to YouTube on how to become better. My children see me doing that. Your children do not do what you tell them to do. They do what they see you do. If you don't read, they won't read. Whatever your father does, that's what he does. That's what you do. And I encourage you, to go and get the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You can find it for 1,000 naira. Invest in yourself. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki. No one owes you anything. Let me drum it into your ear. Your father does not owe you anything. You will find that one out very soon. Your mother does not owe you anything. You owe yourself everything. It is your responsibility to start thinking, how do I make it? When you came to this world, you cried for yourself. You owe yourself. Learn to develop social skills. Learn to be able to relate with people. Learn to be able to talk with people. Learn to be able to influence people. You must learn social and influential skills. That's what leadership is all about. Because when you do that, it becomes the order of the day. And as you do that, begin to ask yourself, where can I market? Where can I push my skills to? If you want to talk to anybody that is 20, you don't need to reach the person on an iPad or newspaper. None of them will read the iPad or newspaper. None of them. You get them on their phones. If you want to sell to somebody that is 25, you get the person on the phone. Every single one of you here wants a phone if you don't have already. Not an iPad. You don't have business with newspaper. So if anybody wants to reach you or you want to reach somebody, don't bother about the newspaper. How do you get them on their phone? Because you are always there. Next slide. If you want to catch somebody from 15 to 30 years old, next slide. You catch them on Instagram, catch them on Snapchat, catch them on Facebook. Those are where you catch people. People that are from 30 to 50, sell your product, you make lemonade at the age of 30. Put them on LinkedIn and then you are going, are going, going to do it there. Next slide. The secret to your success now is what they call attention. There is a young girl in Delta State. Her name is um, Success. 
Success is an eight-year-old girl. 20 seconds. This girl was speaking that if they want to flog her, they will flog her tire. It became a joke. But people did not know that there was timing for that thing. And that girl now, her life has changed. I thought that she was going to stop halfway. But when somebody else was talking to her, she began to talk more, talk more. Her gift is in her mouth. Her gift is not in the schoolwork, but she needs the schoolwork to refine her gift. Her gift is in her mouth. A lady came here and said that she does not like to write. If you cannot write, maybe you like to do video or you like to do audio. Find the best expression for yourself. Nothing stops you from starting now. Say, I hear you. Your success is tied to attention. Next slide. So I urge you to get the attention. Get that attention. Attention means money. Money follows attention. Good day, sir. If you don't have attention, no money is coming near you. If you are the best person that can, that can talk in your school, make sure you get the attention. Look for an opportunity to hold that microphone and show up your gift. Don't keep quiet there. Somebody said I'm an art worker. I dare you come to pastors here and paint pastor and say, Pastor, this is for you. You will stand on this stage. Stop talking to poor people. If you want to fast track your destiny, look for people that can take you there and associate yourself with them. If you talk to your mate, they don't take you anywhere. If you talk to people lower than you, they pull you down. Look for people that are higher than you. They will pull you up. I know you live in Agege, but trust me, you can live in Amsterdam just by a decision. Get the attention. Next slide. Multiply their, keep their attention. Keep it. People are distracted easily, so tell them, put different pockets of your skill. If you can paint, paint in that morning, paint in the afternoon, paint in the evening, post it, post it, post it, post it, post it. Something will catch somebody, will catch them. Will catch them. The Bible says, so walk in the day, so in the day, and in the night withhold not your hand, because you know not where the blessing is coming from. So in the morning, help your uncle in the morning, help your auntie at night. One of them will remember. Bible says they forgot him, but they, somebody remembered him. If he did not do that, nobody will remember you. Your skill, don't bury it, bring it out. Dust it. Next slide. Next slide. If you can write, write for Africa. Write. I have a, I have a, a mentor that I chose. His name is Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. If, if this man, the Emir of Dubai, wants to send a message, he sends it by tweet. By tweet. That's how he communicates. He changes all parliament by Twitter. He has decisions that is done by Twitter. He changed his government by Twitter. By 5 p.m., he released the names of new ministers. One of them was a 27-year-old boy, Oman Bill Sultan al olama And he said to the boy, you are the minister for artificial intelligence. That boy was 27 years old. How old are you? What was the boy's mandate? His mandate was for them to make houses for Dubanians to live in planet Mars by the year 2117. This was 2017. 100 years in advance. They were not thinking of the next election. They were thinking of the next generation. If anybody tells you that what you are doing is not making sense. Tell them I said that is not for their generation. They laughed at a young man called Elon Musk that he wanted to build a car that does not use fuel. Today, that boy, 46 year old, has changed the order of things. He has launched cars that will be that is, that is currently around the world. Elon Musk. South African boy, 46 years old. South African, 46 years old. He launched his car. And in that car, he put a sign that says, made by human beings, in case somebody argues. That car is in the air now. It's there flying. He made a statement, and I'll close with this. He says, living in planet Mars is the easy part. 
that means that they've already planned. That some of you that say, let's go to Dubai, London, is old school. When we are going on holiday, we are going to Planet Mars. Stop thinking about this generation. Any investment in anybody above 40 years old is an investment in the past. Because 40 is the end of a generation. I came to pour out my spirit upon you. That anybody that laughed at you, Buki, Bola, today the person laughed too soon. Tell them that today that they should wait for you. You are coming in style. My name is Ubon King and I'm just your boy.